Today we're going to take a look at the Nokia 5300 Express Music phone available through T-Mobile. The 5300 is a music player phone that attempts to send your MP3 player to the bottom of your junk drawer. Does it get the job done? Let's find out. Taking a quick tour on the 5300 lets you see most of its main attributes. On the front of the phone you'll notice a fairly large screen, D-pad, and function buttons which are accessible while the phone is closed. On the side of the phone, you can see it has a dedicated music button that launches your player, as well as skip backward and forward a track. The 5300 also has a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. Nokia did include a 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter converter jack, but we wish the 5300 had come with a 3.5 millimeter jack to start. Flipping the 5300 over to the other side, you'll see that it has the volume control buttons as well as the camera launch button. On the top of the Nokia 5300 you'll see the charge port, the USB slot, and the power button. There's also the button that lets you access the back hatch of the 5300. This is important because the micro SD card is located underneath the hatch. Trust us when we say that in our time with the 5300 we determined it was best to open the slider first before digging your finger in to access the back hatch. Here you'll see the micro SD slot which thankfully is on the side of the phone and not underneath the battery. Once you've loaded the card in the slot simply put the cover back on and you're ready to rock and roll. Opening the 5300 is a simple affair as the spring assistance slider mechanism works well. Simply pushing your thumb up or down pops it up and down quite nicely. There's also a little ledge on the front of the phone to help your thumb find some leverage. With the 5300 open, you'll see that the keypad is nicely designed and has wide keys that are easy to interact with. The default setting for the 5300 is the T-Mobile My Faves interactive phone book. Using the D-pad, you can scroll left and right through your five favorite people on earth and choose the action you'd like to take. Hitting the center of the D-pad brings up the contact where you can call or send a message or if you choose to just hit the call button initiate a call directly from the home screen with that person selected. If you'd rather not interact with the My Faves home screen, of course the Series 40 operating system of the 5300 lets you customize away to your heart's content. It's just a matter of diving down into the main menu system and turning off the My Faves display. With the My Faves display off, you'll get just a pretty blank home screen. If you want a little bit more interactivity than that, Again, dialing down into the settings menu lets you do a number of different things with the display, including turning on the active standby mode, which, once turned on, gives you quick access to a number of different features and functions of the phone. Okay, okay, enough of all the boring customization stuff. What you really want to do is to start rocking out. Well, the easiest way to launch your tunes is to play the play button on the left side of the phone which, when pressed, launches the last song you played or the first song in your music library if you've powered the phone down and back up. Of course, with the music running, you can access just about every feature of the phone, including the main menu, where you can jump into your messages, games and applications, the internet, change your settings, and more. The one thing you can't do while listening to music is use the camera. Hitting the camera button on the side of the phone automatically stops the music player. While multitasking and listening to music at the same time is fun, you might want to interact with the music library a little bit more. It's simply a matter of dialing down into the music player user interface. Here you can see the track name, album name, followed by the artist name with a progress bar along the bottom. The center control pad here is mirrored on the D-pad which lets you pause, play, fast forward, skip forward, and all the usual music player features. If you'd like to interact with your library, 
Simply hitting the Options button presents you with a number of different ways to access your tunes. If you go straight to the track selection, you'll see all your songs listed in alphabetical order. Or, you can go to the library where you can view your songs by artist, album, or genre. Again, all of these lists are in alphabetical order. One feature of the 5300 which we thought was very useful was the equalizer settings. Not only does the 5300 have five preset equalizers, but it includes two user settable EQs. Simply a matter of dialing down into the options menu and adjusting the sliders on screen. Once you've made your adjustments, hit save and your preset is automatically set to go. This was a really good addition for a music player. As we noted earlier in the review, the one feature of the phone you can't interact with at the same time as the music player is the camera. In fact, with the music player user interface running, pressing the camera button doesn't do anything. In order to take a picture, you have to exit to the home screen. And if you push the camera button here, you'll notice that it stops the music and brings up the camera user interface. The camera on the 5300 is a pretty basic affair. It lets you dial quickly between the video player or the camera and has very limited number of options. Taking a picture, you'll see, consumes about four seconds before you can interact with the user interface again. While it may not replace your 30 gigabyte iPod, the 5300 lets you carry around a couple hundred tunes with its one gigabyte micro SD card. The music player software works well, though we do wish it came with a standard headphone jack. Aside from a few other minor issues, the 5300 provides solid calling, customization, and camera features for a mid-level phone.